Hi, I'm Josh, and in this video, I wanted to go over what uh, I think are three of the biggest features in the new SP404 Mark II update. So there was recently a new update. I say recently, at time of recording, it was a week ago. Uh, so when you see it, probably be about 10 to 11 days, but that's recently, grand scheme of things. There were a bunch of new features added, and I wanted to go over three of them. Those three being that you can now bounce pattern chains to a single sample, the looper, and the tone generator. So let's dive in. To start, let's talk about bouncing pattern chains to a single sample. I'm gonna go into pattern select. I have these patterns. They sound a little bit like this. And what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna go into the chain screen. I'm gonna press hold and one. I've actually already made one, but for the uh, purposes of dramatizing it in this video, I'll undo it. So the way that a pattern chain works is you uh, take your patterns, you order them the way you want the SP404 to play them, and then it plays them back. Technology is quite fascinating in that way. So I'm gonna do, let's see, pattern one, two, and then we'll do three twice. And if I now hit this sub pad button, it's going to play them back in that order. to the end of uh, this instance of A3, it'll just loop back to the beginning. So this is a cool feature, but if for any reason you wanted to bounce one of these chains just to a sample, you could play around with adding different effects. You might want to bounce it into a single sample to then put it into a DAW and work with it in a more powerful software. So on this pattern screen, you're gonna press copy. You're gonna hold, hold, and press, I'm gonna press chain one, and it says copy chain to which sample, and you can see these three samples pulsing with light to tell me that in bank A, those samples don't have anything in them. I'll tap 10, and I'll hit copy. And this is a bit of a process. The SP404 needs time to think. It's doing its best. Let's just let it be. Now, hopefully my brain was in tune with the world enough to uh, know that I should fast forward through that. But now we're back in our sample screen. We've got all our little samples. And if I hit 10 here, guess what we'll hear? Well, let me turn the gate off first. And if I hit 10, guess what we'll hear? So in order to explain the looper, there is another feature of the SP404 Mark II that has to be um, demystified, and that is what's called skip back. So if I play this, and I'm like, yo, that was so cool, I need to save that. Do you see how the mark button is kind of pulsing? I hit mark, and the SP404 Mark II is always listening, and it's recorded now, this little bit of information. I can mess with this sample, and then when I'm done with it, there's what I just played. I can hit record and save it to a pad, but I don't actually care. Now I bring this up not because it is part of the looper, but because if you hit shift and press this made encoder in, It'll ask you if you want to enable the looper and it warns you SBS, that skip back sampling, will be reset. So while you're using the looper, no skip back. While you're using skip back, no looper. You gotta choose. I'm gonna go to okay. And now the way that you get to the looper, same way you get to skip back, mark. First order of business, let's turn off this metronome. So first we can choose how long we want our loop to be. You can either set measures or hit free. That's you have to hit Record to start it, record to end it. You can set a BPM over here, auto trig. So if you're playing stuff internally, it can automatically start recording your loop when you go. However, a really fun thing here is that you can also loop external audio. So I gotta move stuff around. Hold on a moment. The Casio SK-1 is here. If I hit external source, then now it's listening to uh, whatever's plugged into its inputs. 
for example, a Casio SK-1. If I were to hit record, it would start recording whatever I play on here, and it'll loop it back. So let's just throw something together. I'm gonna hit record and I'll start playing at the same time. Now my sloppy eighth notes are a perfect way for us to demonstrate, because I'm not a big fan of this loop I've created, that if I hit, well, if I hit record, it'll stop. If you hit delete, everything's gone. There's no confirmation message, so don't hit delete unless you really, really want to. Let's try it again, and I'll show you the other fun element here. I'm going to do, let's see, brass ensemble. And I'm going to hit record. So now it's playing back. I can choose a different instrument. Let's say this flute. Now I could just play things over this. But if I wanted to add more to the loop, which I've paused here, I can hit resample and that turns on overdub. So it's going to sample things coming in again. I'm gonna turn it off for just a sec because I first need to pick what I want to play. Let's see, jazz organ sound. That sounds good to me. I'm gonna hit record so it keeps playing. I'll hit resample so overdub is on. And I'll play some chords. And now if I wanted to add flute. There's an equivalent of the dungeon synth genre, but it's for a meadow of flowers. I think that might be what I just made. Anyway, let's trash this and let's move on to talking about the tone generator. We've come at last to the final chapter. We hit shift and record setting, and now the SP404 Mark II can make its own sounds. This is not what I would consider like a full-fledged synthesis engine in here. That, that would be really cool if they wanted to add that. And Roland, if you would like to add your uh, Zen Core synth engine to this somehow, you you still got time, you could do it. However, what this does is it'll generate a short sample of a any kind of like basic sound wave that you want. And you can then use that for things like basses. They recommend or suggest basses, but you could also use it for like leads. You could make pads. It's a little, um, it's a bit of a, a handful to like actually really sculpt sounds on here. But to give you an example, so we've got a sine wave here. If I change the wave type, we've got a saw wave, a saw wave with a little plus, a saw two, triangle. I like the triangle wave, try two. Pulse, pulse plus, and then we also have noise. You decide what note you want it to be set to. I'm gonna set it to a C. I'm going to actually also change the octave. I'm gonna boost it two octaves. You can change the envelope as well, and you can change the fine tuning by Hertz. But when you have a sound wave, so, if I like this triangle, I can hit record and write it to, let's say this pad. It's a pretty basic sound generation feature. However, this can combine with, among other things, the ability to add envelopes, the beautiful suite of effects that are in 
the SP404 Mark II. To give you a bit of an idea where you can go with this, if you remember that pattern that we heard at the start, that was made, um, the melodic tones, it's just the bass and the chords, were made using sounds from the sound generator that I added envelopes, resampled, and repitched, and it went from something like this to and eventually So those are three features of this new update that I thought were especially interesting. There's a bunch of stuff that was added. I recommend if you have an SP404 Mark II. I can't think of a great reason not to update. I mean, maybe I've encountered a few bugs, like uh, my SP is kind of frozen up and I've had to turn it off and reset it a couple times. And I haven't really found a clear indicator of why, but I haven't really like lost work it's fine. So if you have an SP404 Mark II, I can't think of a reason not to upgrade. They also allow you to import projects that you had from a uh, SP404 SX, which is great if you're thinking of upgrading. Now, uh, I'm not sponsored by Roland. I'm not telling you to go out and buy an SP404 Mark II, but if you happen to own one or are planning to get one, you know, if you buy one and it's not updated, I, I would recommend updating it and trying it out. I figure as a way to close off, I just loaded a new project here. Uh, you can listen to this beat I made with a sample from some old uh, Japanese city pop. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this. Apologies if I rambled a bit, but uh, I hope it was informative and entertaining. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.